I've come to Africa to look at a very successful British business. Not a business I would invest in, because its product, if used correctly, will kill up to half of its customers, cigarettes. As sales fall in Western Europe, kids as young as a living are starting to smoke in Africa. And 100,000 people a year are dying from smoke-related diseases. Could tobacco companies be targeting kids? Well, we've uncovered some of the extraordinary marketing tactics of a British company. This might pass the film. This allows me to film. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let Visiting me, let me, let foreign me. journalists. Do you care about the way you market your product in Africa to children? Why aren't you working today? I am working today. It's my oh, job. Oh, yeah. you're a paid agitator. Absolutely, yeah. I split my time between the UK and my holiday villa in the south of France. People know me from Dragon's Den. I made my millions from nursing homes and fitness clubs. I'm not going to invest, so I'm out. Mm -hmm. This is where I relax with my wife and kids. I'm passionate about cigarette smoking because it's just completely unnecessary. Seeing my father die from emphysema was, made me quite angry. But then also when I owned the nursing home business and I saw old ladies coming in and I saw a lady who had cancer on her tongue and a lady who would have a gas mask, she'd take a gas mask off and have a cigarette, put the gas mask back on because of the addiction. About 20 years ago I set a trust fund up for my children and I put rules in the trust fund. And the rules are very simple, if you break the rules, you get, your trust money gets stopped. One of the rules is, if you start smoking cigarettes, your trust fund stops. No. I smoked 20 a day for 10 years before I had kids. Everybody should try and stop, and everybody should stop. You can stop if you really, really try. How do you stop? You just stop. I just stopped. I just said, I'm not smoking anymore. I've stopped, and that's it. It wasn't easy, but I did it. I'm off to Africa. I've heard that primary school kids are starting to smoke cigarettes. So my immediate reaction is, what are the marketing departments of tobacco companies up to? So the first place I'm going to go to is Mauritius. I'm going to be looking to see if a company is actually coming into Africa and deliberately targeting them as a future customer for the cigarettes. When I'm finished in Mauritius, I'm going to fly over, fly over to Nigeria. I'm going to go to Lagos, Nigeria, because I understand there's a court case going on at the moment and there's some dispute. I want to try and get my head around that and see what's actually happening. And from Lagos, I'm going to fly over to Malawi. I know Malawi very well. I have friends in Malawi. There are children in schools that are fed by me in Malawi. I want to go and talk to them. I never, ever, ever got the idea when I was last in Malawi that children were smoking, but I'm told they are, so I'm going to go and find out for myself. First stop, Mauritius. It's an island paradise. Tourists flock here from all over the world. But behind the glamour, it is one of the highest levels of children smoking in all of Africa. The first thing I'm going to do is visit a school. Now, this school is called the Oasis of Peace. And I want to find out how many children in the Oasis of Peace school smoke. Bonjour, Monsieur Duncan. Bonjour. 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 Um, <clears throat> my name is Duncan Bannatyne, and I'm a businessman in England, and I do a television program. Also, I am a father of six children. I want you to be honest with me. How many of you smoke cigarettes? One, two, three, four, five. These kids are aged between 11 and 14. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. 21 out of 39. That's more than half of you. Okay, put your hands down. I want to know what brand recognition is like. Now, which brands do you know? Embassy. 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 Viceroy. Viceroy. Embassy. Matinee. 
These are all British American tobacco brands. They know the brands, but do they know the harm cigarettes are doing them? This is a living. She's been smoking since she was eight. Do you know, if you continue to smoke, it will kill you. You didn't know before? No one ever told you? Where do you get the money? He's got 20 rupees per day as pocket money, so he keeps 10 rupees for cigarettes. What do you do about buying lunch? The money is supposed to buy you lunch, isn't it? Sometimes he would rather smoke than eat. Sometimes you would rather smoke than eat. That's addiction. Ronald Ecclesio runs a one-person anti-smoking organization called Visa. And you can choose which lung you prefer to have. The good one, smoke-free, or the bad one with plenty of tar. You came today to the, the school to teach the children about the dangers of smoking. What do you think they knew before you came? I don't think that uh, they knew much because uh, where would they get, get the information? And especially the right information. Is there really a smoking problem amongst children in Mauritius? And how big is it? It's a very big uh, problem. You know, there has been a survey of the Global Youth Tobacco Survey uh, with children between 13 and 15 years old. And approximately uh, a third of all children are smokers. And this is a lot. And um, unfortunately, uh, most uh, smokers are found among the poorest. Why is it so easy for Ryan Oliven and Thierry 13 to spend their lunch money on cigarettes? The answer is they can buy single cigarettes. The Ministry of Health is pushing for legislation to ban them, but they are available everywhere. Was it easy to buy a single stick in the shop? To pass in the Yes. How much were they? Eight rupees. Eight rupees for two? Four rupees each? Yes. That's seven pence each. Single sticks are banned in the UK. They are very attractive to kids and the tobacco companies know that. British American Tobacco even say in the marketing code that are opposed to single sticks because it makes smoking more accessible to kids. I want to find out more about how these single sticks are actually being sold and promoted. Bonjour. Do you have a cigarette? Thanks. Which one? What one do you have in singles? Yeah. Embassy, yeah. From Bat? Yes. Yeah. They give you the pot? Yes. Ah. You have more? You want one? Okay. Lovely. This? 850. Ten, that's ten, yeah. Thank you very much. So this is free? Yes. This little pot was given to the shopkeeper by the British American Tobacco Corporation in order that he can sell singles. Who buys singles? Children. In my opinion, this is about encouraging children to smoke cigarettes. Was it a one-off? We went to three other shops and found the same pots provided by BAT to promote single sticks. Back at the hotel, it's raining in paradise. Time to find out more about BAT in Mauritius. They have 98.9% .9 of the market. That's quite amazing. No rivals, really. But advertising's banned here, so what are they up to? Vronik's organisation, backed by tiny grant funding from abroad, has been monitoring BAT's activities. Yeah. So what happened after the advertising ban came in? It still went on in disguised form. Don't you think that this is advertising? 
Yes. This is incredible, you know, because it's the 45th anniversary of BAT in Mauritius. What to boast about, what to celebrate? Oh, so they're advertising the 45th anniversary, but not the cigarettes. So it's advertising. And <laughs> each time that Visa noticed such a breaches of the law, we would make a statement to the police. And we had at least 40 statements of breaching of advertising after the ban. Veronique complained about this leaflet that BAT wanted to promote in schools. I mean, to be fair, it did include information about health risks. And if this is their leaflet, it, it seems to me it says that the way forward is to smoke and the way back is not to smoke. Of course, they know the power of image. Mm. And the, the indirect message there, the um, virtual message, is, of course, if you want to be fashionable yep. and if you want to go forward, you have to smoke. And mm. people who don't smoke are just backward. This is right. significant. And That's what it looks like, yeah. And the first words, I mean, my French isn't very good, but it says smoking is a pleasure. The tobacco industry tries to approach youth by any means, as 90% of smokers have started before the age of 18. Mm. So they have to catch the youth to make the industry thrive. So advertising is banned. BAT have clearly been trying to get around that in sneaky ways. Brand recognition is crucial. I noticed a shop that was painted the same colour as Matinee, one of the main brands. Then I started to see them everywhere. This is a packet of Matinee cigarettes. The same colour as the shop behind me. Coincidence or not coincidence? Advertising? I'm not advertising. I like to ask the shopkeeper whose idea it was to paint a shop this colour. How are you doing? I'm Duncan from England. Yeah. I'm doing a story on cigarettes. And I notice your shop is the same colour as the packet. Who painted it? The factory. The cigarette factory? Yes, BAT. British ah. American Tobacco. Ah, so they painted it for you? Yes. And uh, was there a condition you have to only sell less cigarettes or anything? No, no condition. It's only for you know, advertisement. Advertisement. So they painted it as an advertisement yes. for their cigarettes. Yes. You told me that the British American Tobacco Factory painted his shop three years ago, which is after the ban on advertising came in. I said, why do you think he did that? And he said, to advertise their product. British American Tobacco Company, but BAT, whatever you want to call it, I know it's a huge, huge company with huge profits. And one of the people on the board of directors is a man I admired for many years, a man called Kenneth Clark, who was a great chancellor in Great Britain. I would love to interview Kenneth Clark and ask him if he knows what the organization he's involved with is doing to these children in Mauritius. Cigarettes are everywhere in Mauritius. So what is this doing to Mauritius' health and what will happen to the 11-year-olds who have already started smoking? They're very likely to end up here at the cardiac centre. Population are very prone to type 2 diabetes. Heavy smoking on top of that clogs up their arteries and leads to heart disease. We cannot actually cope with all the ischemic heart disease that we get. We cannot cope, you know. We, we, we do two to three open heart surgery every day here. And for a small island like Mauritius, it's quite a big figure. I've seen 12-year-olds smoking in the schools. What's the youngest patient you've had to operate on? <clears throat> 26 years old, you know. To have an infarct at the age of 26, 28, 30 is very common in the island, you see. You, you rightly said, children start smoking at the age of 12, 15. And today, for us doctors, there's an equation, you know, which tells you that 10 cigarettes uh, per day for 20 years or 20 cigarettes per day for 10 years, it equals ischemic heart disease. Dr. Gunner says his own very strong views on the tobacco company, BAT. 
They have what they call a corporate responsibility programme and have offered his hospital sponsorship. They have offered us to paint the, the place, to sponsor the mail ward, to buy beds, and this would have been on a yearly basis, you know. But this means that it will be written somewhere, sponsored by so-and-so tobacco company. It's another way to make publicity. We cannot accept that. See, I think that once for all, these funny things should stop, because this is what I tell my patients, you know. Every day, you are buying poison. You go to the shop, you buy a packet of cigarettes, it's pure poison. If I was the managing director of the tobacco company and I said to you, we're supplying cigarettes because we think people should have a choice, what would you say to me? I think that the choice uh, is not a good one. The tobacco companies, they have got one thing, is to sell as many cigarettes as, as they want. We are, at the end there, uh, receiving the cigarette smokers, you know. Yeah. We should be the one to give the choice. Yeah. And believe me, when we explain to people, there is no choice. I'm leaving Mauritius shortly. I'm leaving it with memories of the school children who, and I hope I'm wrong in this, will probably continue to smoke cigarettes. I'm leaving it with memories of Dr. Gunnis, who's doing two or three heart operations every day. And I hope he doesn't have to in the future, but I'm concerned that he will, or it will get worse. I'm leaving with memories of how BAT or BAT continue to raise the profile. The methods you use, in my opinion, are not ethical. Next stop, Nigeria. This is Lagos, Nigeria. It's a very open community. I've been told it's pretty dangerous to film here, even though we have a permit. The local people don't really like it. And as soon as I get in the car, the half of our field. BET's headquarters are in London, but Africa is one of its key markets. They have a license to market many well-known brands. BET have been a big player in Nigeria for years. Up to the year 2000, they operate this Nigerian tobacco. In the 80s and 90s, they successfully launched Rothmans and Benson and & Hedges. And now they have an amazing 92% of the market. But they're embroiled in a huge legal case. Pardon? Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, what is it that you're filming, please? This is my pass to film. This allows me to film. OK, hold on, hold on. Let visiting me, let me, foreign me, journalists. I understand, okay? I understand. I'm a visiting journalist. It's been signed. I understand. And hold I'm allowed on. to film. Hold on, hold on. OK? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It seems that for some reason, the employees of BAT don't want us to film outside their office. I don't know why. OK? Yeah? They are still videoing. I told you to hold on, and they are still videoing. Ah, but you have no right to tell me. I've got a permit. I say you should hold on. I'm not stopping you from whatever you're doing, but I say you should hold on. OK, well, Let hold on. contact the proper authorities. Is this the proper authorities? Yeah, they are coming. OK, if that's lovely. If you have the genuine permission to do that, you go ahead. I have a picture, yeah. Hold, hold on, press. hold on. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm Duncan Bannett. How are you doing? How are you doing? You all right? Okay, yeah, smash in. Yeah, I saw your guys yesterday trying to video this uh, place. Yeah, center. we're just feeding the streets here now. You know, we have the official pass no for foreign journalists. Sorry? We have the official pass for a foreign journalist to video. There is nothing preventing you know the world is a public place. Yeah. What the world is saying about tobacco, we all know about it. It's yeah. Not a, it's not a crime to smoke much as the... Oh, no, not at all. No, no problems. But you don't just come. We are trying to avoid espionage functions. No, it's there and it's a lot of... No, no espionage. This can't stop. That's made me even more keen to find out what they're embroiled in. For years, the Nigerian government has encouraged the tobacco industry. But now, Lagos state government are suing BAT and Philip Morris, other big player in Africa, for £9 billion which is what the lawyers estimate it will cost to treat smoking-related diseases. 
Baba Tunde Irukera is part of a team of lawyers who have sifted through thousands of BAT's own documents released through court cases against tobacco companies in the U.S. They believe the documents show that tobacco companies targeted children in Nigeria in the 90s. New smokers entered the market at a very early age. In many cases, as young as eight or nine years seems to be quite common. Most of our respondents had started smoking before they left junior school. So again, here you are, you have BAT admitting that they had respondents who were between eight and nine. I mean, there's a big difference between knowing your market and selling your product and targeting young people, isn't it? Yes. And as far as we're concerned, this really is about knowing their market. They knew this market, and this document was created to continue to expand this market. So it's actually something that shows they knew that they were selling to eight to nine year olds. They knew that people this young were smoking their products, not just by assumptions, but really by their own material. And they were also creating material to continue to target people and continue to recruit new smokers. BAT says they're not targeting kids, and the documents refer to young, urban, affluent smokers. It seems to me the strategy, based on market research, was to create big music events targeted at young people in general. The two things become pretty clear. One, the marketing was successful because they boast that they increased their share of the young urban smokers 29% after they started the Benson and Hedges music festivals. The second thing it becomes very clear is their attitude to the release of proper information. Their own 1995 document shows how they want to stymie information coming out from governments about the problems that tobacco causes. BAT denied they're targeting kids and they're contesting the action. Well, still in Lagos, hardest bed I've ever slept in since I was in prison. I want to watch a DVD I've been given of those Benson and Hedges music festivals in the 90s. They were supposed to be for over 18. It's somebody very special. He was in front of 120,000. Golden Tones were there to film him. There at Loud and Proud in Lagos. 120,000 people went to this concert. Let me hear the Behind the artist is the Benson and Hedges. Branding. They were also televised. I think this would be attractive to all young people, 18 or not. I think that's targeted at youths. Akinbode Oliver Femi campaigns against smoking, and he went to see his music events. Was there an age check on the door? They will tell you that there, there is an age limit. Yep. But because I attended one of those personally, I can tell you that it doesn't work. Because no one at the gate would check whether you are underage or not. I certainly saw myself underage kids that were at these concerts and nobody checked them, nobody did anything to them. Through those concerts, they've been able to sell the idea of smoking yeah. to our youth by associating cigarettes with music. Smoking used to be socially unacceptable in Nigeria but there's been a 50% increase in just 10 years. I can board the blame to tobacco companies. We had this calculated attempt to, you know, change the Nigerian attitude yeah. so that, you know, Nigerians will begin to accept people who smoke. Nigerians will begin to see something, I mean, smoking as something fashionable, something obeying, something sophisticated. TV promotions and advertising are now banned in Nigeria, but it seems BAT are still finding ways of getting their message across to youth. So this is the Benson and Hedges umbrella, huh? Yeah. Then you can, I mean, every store you can buy cigarettes. You can yeah. just decide to buy them in sticks. And you can see the point of sale adverts. Uh, yeah. You know. Where did you get the umbrella from? By the company. Uh -huh. by, the, by the cigarette company. Did you pay for it? It's free. Yeah, I said, he said, I cannot pay. They give it to you free. It's in the hedges to put here. That's advertising. This is an advert yeah. of Palmer. It's, it's by British American Tobacco. Come hang out with Palmer. Yeah. You know, when you buy two packs of Palmer filter, then you can win wristwatches, t shirts, wallets. Recharge I mean, cards. These are things yeah. that are attractive to kids. 
Uh, and you can see that all these are not for adults. Yeah. Certainly not for adults. An American accent. Niger? Niger spirit. Spirit. Yeah, N Niger is a funky way of saying Nigeria. Ah. So yeah. if you want to be like the Americans, smoke a cigarette. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Go by two, eh? Uh -huh. So one, one for you, yep. then one for yeah. me. Okay. How uh, much? Twenty. Uh, Twenty. How much is one of these? How much with this one? This is fifty naira. So 15. you need five of what it takes to buy this. Yeah. To buy this in you know, one of the cheapest biscuits for kids to go to Three. school. So the children can buy one piece of shortbread mm -hmm. or five cigarettes. Exactly. That's so unbelievable. This is, this, so this is way, way cheaper yeah. than, than biscuits. Wow. Yeah. Stop now. Yeah. It's nice and hard. You light your cigarette like this. <laughs> so you even have to buy a match or a lighter. You don't. You light it here. Very bad for you. Blocks up your lungs. Well, You'll die. I might bounce. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> well, I'm packing to leave Lagos, and just in case you think I've uh, been living in a luxury hotel whilst filming, I can tell you that I've just accidentally stood in my pet cockroach. Two days he's lived with me, and now he's dead. It was an accident, buddy. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Lagos. Time to consult an expert. How many people in Africa will die from smoke-related diseases? Currently, it's uh, projected 100,000 deaths uh, uh, per year. And this, our projections, uh, based on the best current estimates, project that this number will double to uh, around 200,000 in year 2030. Wow. Could you put that in some sort of global context? Today, uh, tobacco is estimated to kill 5.4 million persons uh, per year, and that's more, uh, more deaths than uh, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and malaria combined. How many deaths did you say? 5.4 million deaths. 5.4 million deaths per year? Per year, yes. From tobacco? From tobacco. Good God. I've come to Malawi where less than 10% of the population smoke. I'm here to find out if BAT are using the same tactics here to build a market. Thank you. Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world. So I'm in Malawi, not for the first time. I've got connections in Malawi. I've been coming here for a long time. I've got a lot of friends here. And uh, there's just something about Malawi that attracts you back. It's such a fantastic country. Beautiful people, very, very friendly people. Always happy, no matter what problems they have, the people are always happy. They work very hard. Hi. Work very hard just to get the basic needs, water, sanitation, and they live a life. Most people don't smoke, but tobacco is big in Malawi. It's their biggest commercial crop, and it accounts for 60% of their exports. It's dried in these racks. I have to say, the smell is very nice. If you could just sell the smell without damaging people's lungs and people's hearts, then it'd be okay. It does smell really nice. We are selling at one dollar forty cents a kilo onwards. One dollar forty cents yeah. a kilo. A kilo on yeah. average. In a good year, Babutu Sarumba can make eight times more from tobacco than any other crop. He has 40 acres and dries and grazes it on his farm. He employs 40 people and he's got an ingenious way of packing the tobacco for market. <laughs> oh, I see. 
There's no electricity on the farm. This is just so fascinating, so enterprising that they find some way of pressing the tobacco. This guy should be in Dragon's Den. Uh, I wouldn't put my money in this because it's tobacco, but um, I put my money in this guy. <laughs> if tobacco couldn't sell, what would you do? Would you grow more maize or how would you survive? No, if you, we don't grow tobacco, at least you can grow maize and you, we can start any other business. But if the tobacco season is good, tobacco industry is the, the big income in Malawi. Do you see an increase in the number of people who smoke? Yes, yes. Every day, people are increasing. Why do you think that is? Because Malawi is so poor. Where are people getting the money to smoke cigarettes? Malawi is poor, but uh, actually, it's not all that poor. People who smoke, they don't mind about their poorness. They can manage to buy a cigarette and they can smoke. For people who smoke, they, ha they, ha they, ca they, they don't mind about food, but for a cigarette, they can afford. Oh, they don't mind about food, but they can buy a cigarette. A cigarette they can afford. So they buy a single cigarette? Yeah. Here's a big question for you, OK? A big question. OK. Welcome. Do you smoke cigarettes? No, I don't. Why not? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you grow it, you dry it, you, dry you sell it, it. Ah, no. you encourage it, but you I, don't smoke. I, yeah, I don't smoke. Why not? Uh, uh, I think it's just because my old mom told me not to smoke. <laughs> Your mum told you not. His mum told him not to smoke. So he doesn't smoke, but yeah. he grows it, he yeah. dries it, yeah, and he I sells it. it. <laughs> Although tobacco is an important export crop, when I've been to Malawi in the past, I haven't seen many people smoking. It's been quite taboo. I wonder if that's changing. My connection with Malawi is through a charity called Mary's Mills. I've been putting money into this project for a few years now. OK, how you doing? Good. Should I steal this one for you? Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a local dish called the Kuni Pala. Pala's for porridge, and the Kuni is where it was started from. It's a very staple diet. It's a diet that keeps the people alive. These children get fed one couple of Kuni Pala per day, and that keeps them going. The reason it's so funny when I stir it is that in the tradition of this country, the men never do any kitchen work, any housework. They don't stir the porridge. And so it's very funny when a man stirs the porridge. If the kids come to school, they get a free meal. It's a simple way of encouraging parents to send the kids to school. These kids have got very, very little. Even the backpacks are donations from Scottish primary schools. Kids here say they don't smoke, but I was curious to know how much they know about cigarettes. What brand names of cigarettes do you know? Embassy. Embassy? Right. Embassy. You know the brands very well, don't you? Yes. But most of you seem to know Embassy. Yeah. Why do you think the other boys who attend, why do you think they smoke? They say the smoke gives wisdom. The smoke gives them what? Wisdom. They say smoke gives wisdom. Yes. They say that sometimes when they smoke, in terms of writing examinations, they'll pass the examinations. <laughs> they say that when they're writing, when they smoke, uh, their brains are fresh. Wow. Only 9% of adults smoke in Malawi. But it seems that might be about to change. And I wonder if these kids are at risk. In the town of Zomba, there are posters in many of the shops advertising the single sticks that were so attractive to the kids who smoked in Mauritius. It's a poster produced by the British American Tobacco Company. 
which is advertising cigarettes and advertising single sticks. And it's selling the price of a packet of cigarettes and the price of a single stick. That price for Quatcha is something like two pence, depending on the exchange rate. Two pence for a cigarette, for a cancer stick. BAT said they don't sell single sticks. This poster proves different. This poster shows that they advocate the sale of single sticks and they encourage it. Who buys single sticks? Children. Just up the road is this project for street kids. Some of the poorest kids in Malawi, mostly orphans. So I want you to tell me, first of all, how many of you ever tried a cigarette or smoke now? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's more than half the kids. You smoke? James 11 and Elson 14 are two of the kids who smoke. They both spend their day at the bus station. Elson tries to make a living carrying people's bags. His friend James sells cigarettes. <laughs> He's doing good business. In England, I'm a businessman. I buy things and sell things, make lots of money. I understand you too are a businessman and you buy things and sell things. Can you show me? How many cigarettes do you smoke in a day? Ten. Ten per day? And you're a living? How much do you pay for 20? 65. And how much do you sell them for? Hundred kwacha is what I make. Wow. Good business. And how many do you smoke? Four. Four a day. Where do you buy your cigarettes? I buy some from him, but I also buy from the groceries around here. But it's very bad for you, cigarettes. Can you read what it says here? Read it to me. Mm. No, I can't read. You can't read? So he's got a business, buying and selling cigarettes, but he can't read. So he can't read the warning signs. <laughs> At the end of a long day, James has earned enough money from selling cigarettes to rent space in a hut to sleep. It all goes down to, to peer pressure because all my friends, they, they smoke us. Back at the bus station, Elson settles down for the night. He sleeps in the back of a minibus. I don't have any belongings. Uh, the, the only clothes I have are the ones I'm putting on right now. China. It's, it's, it's now a habit for me. I, it's, it's something I can't just do without. Not only we've got a living year old smoking, we've got a living year old buying and selling cigarettes to make a living. At the school, most of the children knew the brand names of cigarettes. But more than 10 years ago, the government discouraged advertising and asked television stations and radio stations not to advertise. So what are BAT up to here? 
Seoul City Blantyre. BAT hosted a Pall Mall Embassy music event here. It was in the paper. Blantyre smokes Pall Mall fun. One of the must attend events of the year. A marathon of fun with leading Malawian bands. We sent a cameraman into filming. A couple of days after the event, an employee of BAT approached our cameraman and asked them not to send this tape to us. That's how powerful BAT are in Malawi. But we got the tape anyway. The event they didn't want us to see featured some of the most popular bands in Malawi. They were all wearing Pall Mall Embassy shirts and caps. BAT have got their own code of conduct in relation to music events. We were really intrigued to see if we could find out if they were breaching their own codes. At this music event, or Pungwe, there was no formal age verification on the door and it was in a venue popular to youth, both breaches of the code. This is the British American Tobacco International Tobacco Products Marketing Standards. This is their standards written by them. And I can see so many breaches. They say no advertising is to be aimed at or particularly to appeal to youth. Well, this does. It's aimed at youth and it appeals to youth. Their own code says that no advertising is to feature a celebrity or contain an endorsement implied or expressed by a celebrity. This does. This breaches those codes. Oh my God, there's a big stack of cigarette packets. Oh, they're jumping into the packet of cigarettes, the, the pile of cigarette packets, the mountain of cigarette packets. It's obviously a big feature of the evening. It's a competition. Buy a packet of cigarettes, write your name in the back, and enter it for the draw, and you might win a prize. It seems BAT are using all the same marketing stunts that their own internal documents tell us were so successful in attracting young people in Nigeria. This is probably one of the only exciting events in Malawi this year. This is a fantastic event if it wasn't cigarette related. This is just incredibly cheeky. Do you know what the Malawi people love music? They love excitement, and they bid this, an exciting event, a musical set, exciting event, and then filled the floor with a mountain of cigarette packets and made cigarettes a big item. Is it that? Encouraging kids to smoke? I'm convinced it is. It's making cigarettes look exciting for them. We were curious to find out more about that competition with the cigarette packs that everyone was going crazy about. It was advertised throughout Malawi in even the smallest shops. This is another poster by the British American Tobacco Company, which is saying that if you buy the cigarettes, you can put your name in a draw and you can win a music system, a television, a bicycle, or a million kwacha. That's nearly £4,000. A brilliant way of encouraging people to start smoking cigarettes and selling your product. The party for the winners of that life-changing £1 million kwacha prize was held in a hotel in Mazuzi in the north of Malawi. This time, we sent a secret cameraman in. There was no way to check on the door, and our man Abdi walked straight up and was welcomed in. Can I get a drink? Yeah. BAT are working hard in a country where smoking is still not part of the culture. There were posters everywhere. They were handing out free cigarettes. And it was a huge check for the winner of this competition. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Benjamin. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, it's not every day that you get to get so much money. Uh, please use it well and use it responsibly. You will need to remember this Paul Molemba's promotion. It's a new product that we launched last year and it's doing very well. And the reason why it's doing very well is because of you guys. It was all going well. So Abdi asked if he could film with his camcorder. They said that was fine, so long as he didn't film any of the children. The promotional goods with Pal Mal Nemon, which breaks their own code again. Abdi sneaked back to his hotel room. Come back from the BAT cocktail party. There were no wage checks at the door. Um, when we got in and they announced the prize winner, um, they started giving away free bags uh, with Pal Mal branding on it. And uh, as well as that, I got um, a packet of free cigarettes. This free bag with a cigarette advert went down well with this kid. He'd been at the event. Then Abdi managed to get an interview with the lucky one million Quacha winner, Mr. Good Brandy and his wife. How do you feel? By God's grace, I and my family have made it. So we don't take it for granted, but we're just praising God since he's the one that have, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, he's the one that have uh, made us to be the one million winner uh, BAT promotion. Do you, do you smoke? Of course, I was smoking, but not in, uh, I was smoking, but my parents were not knowing. Only after, I mean, after I have won, it's when I disclosed that I do smoke. <laughs> yeah. And what was your reaction to him telling you that, that you, he smoked? I was about to be shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah. yeah. But do you forgive him now? Because if he didn't smoke, he wouldn't have won. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Just because we have won, then I will forgive him. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing. The chap who's won is thanking God. And he's telling us that his parents didn't know he smoked. And I think he said his wife didn't know he smoked. So therefore, he must have known it was wrong to smoke. But he buys the cigarettes and prays to God that he will win the money. Now, of course, when he tells everyone, I've won this life-changing amount of money, we're all going to have a better life. And by the way, I was a secret smoker. Everyone forgives him. From what I've seen and the information I've gathered, I'm really keen to get back to London and interview somebody who represents BAT. Put some important questions to them and see what their answers are. I've always fancied doing that type of interview. The directors will probably be skilled, they'll have media training. But I have the evidence. I'm going to relish the interview. Back in rainy London, today is BAT's annual general meeting. There's an unusual protest going on. So, man, why have you and your colleagues put a thousand shoes on the pavement? Well, BAT have been in Africa for uh, 100 years this year, and uh, this year they sold 100 billion cigarettes. Now, that's enough, uh, we reckon, to cause 100,000 deaths. So the kids were really keen to wear enough shoes, so each empty shoe represents a thousand deaths a year. It's a perfect example of uh, British industry doing abroad what they would never do at home. And that's what we want to show them up for doing. BAT's profits this year are £2.9 billion. Pounds. Just down the road, I wanted to see if I could have a word with some of the shareholders going into the AGM. Excuse me, can I ask you why you have shares in the tobacco company? No. Can I ask you why you have shares in the tobacco company? Do you care about the many people you kill? Do you care about where your product's marketed? Do you care about the way you market your product in Africa to children? There's too many enough to smoke. Is the money the only important thing for you? 
have your dividends is there any other reason you would you would invest oh, dear, in a tobacco oh, company? Why aren't you working today? I am working today, it's my oh, job. Yeah. Oh you're a paid agitator. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you why you have shares in a tobacco company? Why? Because I've worked for it for a long time. And uh, I believe in choice, and I'm delighted that you have the freedom to protest. And, and are, you, are you happy whether you sell cigarettes or children in Africa? Inside the AGM are the board of directors. How is the AGM, sir? Very good, thank you. Very good. Are you proud of the market your products in Africa? Yep. You're very proud, are you? Yep. He's proud of the way markets his products in Africa. That's what he said. That's a good AGM, sir? Yeah, excellent. Are you happy with your marketing policies in Africa? Yeah. You happy with your sales cigarettes to children? Yeah. Single cigarettes? You happy with that, sir? No. Making enough money, sir? I particularly wanted to see Kenneth Clark MP and former Chancellor of the Exchequer. He'd recently announced his resignation from BAT. Good AGM, gentlemen. Good AGM. Are you proud of the way you market your products in Africa? Kenneth Clark, please give us a word, Kenneth. Kenneth, give me one word, Kenneth. Mr. Clark, just one word, Mr. Clark. Just one word. Are you proud of the way you market your cigarettes in Africa, Kenneth? Mr. Leslie, Kenneth, have you resigned? Are you proud of the way you sell cigarettes in Africa? Children are buying cigarettes in Africa, Mr. Clark. Are you proud of that? One word, Mr. Clark. Oh, Kenneth Clark seems a bit shy. I'm surprised. I thought he was very outgoing. And question time is very different. I'm very disappointed, Mr. Clark. He looks ashamed. He should be ashamed. He looked guilty. He should be guilty. That was Kenneth Clark's last day at BAT. He declined our request for a formal interview. But three weeks later in May, BAT have finally agreed to meet me. I'm looking forward to this. I think their marketing policy in Malawi is indefensible. Single sticks, music concerts, try to catch young people. I wonder what they're going to say. I'm really curious. I asked for an interview with the chairman of the chief executive, but they've put up Chris Proctor. He's head of science. Funny job at a tobacco company, isn't it, head of science? We gave them allegations about breaking the marketing code a month or so ago. So they've had plenty of time to prepare. No, single sticks. The sale of single sticks cigarettes is particularly attractive to children. But you seem to encourage it because you have posters. I can show you one of the posters. Clearly advertising single sticks. Produced by yourselves. It's got the price for 20 and the price for a single cigarette and a single cigarette there. Yeah, and um, it's, it's, it is a real issue. I agree, Duncan. So you're going to continue to produce the posters? Um, the posters, well, this one is a... The poster you showed me shows some branding, and that will be against the, the marketing standards that we've uh, just reinvigorated and will we'll be finalised for June 2008, where anything at a, a point of sale or a poster like that it could say a price, but it would have to be in black and white and with a health warning. Yeah, I've got some more here, just to make sure you see how bad these posters are. This is um, Malawi, <coughs> Nigeria, all advertising single sticks. See that. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I mean, the, the Nigerian one has got a um, price of two sticks, but shows the packs, and, and so does, the, so does the, uh, the one from Malawi. So we're trying to say, look, you know, this is a pack. The pack has got health warnings on, and the advertising has health warnings on. The practical matter is we do put the price of, of sticks there. As I said, in terms of our upgrade of our marketing um, standards, this kind of branding, you know, actually saying the name of the products, will go away. That's a pot so the shopkeeper can put the single cigarettes in the pot. Yeah, is that for Mauritius? Yeah. So I know what, what happened in Mauritius. Mauritius, in 1999, before 99, there were pots for single six on in a retailers with brands on. And the law came into place, they took the brands off. And from then on, they were, you were allowed to have pots, but you had a health warning. This one says, government warning, smoking causes cancer, heart disease, and bronchitis. But from 2006, we have stopped that completely. We've withdrawn it. So this should be an old one. If it's not an old one, we need to look at it because they should have been withdrawn entirely from, from the marketplace in Mauritius. 
Well, I, I don't know if you saw the position number, but the shopkeeper who gave it to me says he gets some from British American Tobacco, he gets them free, he can get as many as he wants, so he doesn't want any money from me. I tried to buy it, he gave it to me. Well, I talked to, I mean, I talked to our company there, and they said they've stopped that since 2006, so we'll, we'll certainly relook at that. You seem to be rather what I could call sneaky on your brand stretch. You're not allowed to advertise, but you're painting shops the same colour as your packets of cigarettes. Yeah, and no, I've seen that, and, and you're right, there were, there were a series of shops that have been painted a yellow, the same colour as one of our, our, our brands there. Um, we had a look at it recently, it wasn't against the law, but it didn't look right, so we've been back in there and we've been making sure that those are repainted. Do you know what a pongo is? A pongo. Pongo. Yes, I do. Pongo. Yes. It's an uh, all night long event. Yes. Um, you organise them um, in Malawi. They're clearly targeted at youth. Well, they weren't. I mean, the, 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 the one you're talking about in Malawi was a promotion because what we were doing was, was migrating one of our brands that's called Embassy to another brand called Pau Mau. And the only way you could get to this event was you had to be a smoker and you had to buy a pack of cigarettes, not a stick, but a pack. And inside the pack there would be a, something you'd fill out, including uh, age verification. What we also made sure is when, when people got to the event that we actually even asked the Malawian police to come and help guard the event to ask people when they were going in, are you over 18? So it was certainly a dance event and it's for over 18s. It shouldn't, there shouldn't have been anyone there under 18. No, it happens by pure coincidence when I was there, I met the owner of Soul City where the Pongwe was held. And he said to me, no formal age verification was asked for on the door. Or he said there was no formal age verification on the door. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just, if that's the case, that is disappointing. That's certainly not what we would wish to happen. I think it's going to continue. I think people are going to continue dying from cigarettes in Africa. I think there are going to be more deaths than malaria. I think it's going to get worse. Well, I think your criticism helps all companies like ourselves because we listen to those criticisms and we will be looking at these issues. I'd like you to take you to Africa and show you the problems that I've seen and show you where you can change your policies. So if I paid you a first-class airfare, would you come with me and spend a week in Africa with me? Well, I wouldn't um, need to go first class, um, but I'll ask, ask people around if we could fit it in. So you'll come for a week with me? I won't guarantee that, because I'd have to, to look at schedules and stuff, but... I'm sure you can take a week out of your diary. I'll pay the fare, I'll pay a hotel bill, everything. OK? Well, we'll look at it. You'll look at it? Yeah. Or you'll do it? We'll look at it. OK. I'm glad I've done this. I'm glad I've found the evidence. I'm glad I've showed it to them. They've squirmed a bit. They've made some promises, some apologies, and they've promised to make some changes. They've done that before, though. Until they do, in my opinion, this is absolutely the most unacceptable face of British business. BAT got back to us to say that Chris Proctor is not able to take up the offer of a trip to Africa with me.